The Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress, 1350 caliber machine guns, 4,230 pounds of defensive firepower, 10 highly trained crewmen, a name that promised invincibility. The Army Air Forces called it the most heavily defended bomber in history. Hollywood turned it into a flying tank that shredded German fighters by the dozens. And between 1942 and 1945, 77% of B-17 crews either died, went missing, or were captured before completing their 25-mission tour. Let me show you the brutal mathematics of why the most defended bomber in the sky couldn't defend itself. Here's the brutal mathematics of the B-17's defensive system. Each aircraft carried 13 machine guns, two in the nose, two in the top turret, two in the ball turret underneath, two in the waist positions, one in the radio room, two in the tail, and two cheek guns. Thirteen weapons creating overlapping fields of fire. The Army Air Forces calculated this should make the bomber nearly impervious to fighter attack. The reality? German fighter pilots quickly discovered the B-17 had a massive blind spot directly ahead and below the nose. The approach zone measured roughly 30 degrees where none of those 13 guns could track a target. Luftwaffe tactics evolved to exploit this gap. They would dive from high altitude, building speed to over 400 miles per hour, fire a burst at 300 yards, and break away before the defensive guns could even traverse to track them. The attack window lasted approximately four seconds. In that brief moment, a single German fighter could fire 120 rounds of 20 millimeter cannon shells. Now let's talk about what those machine guns could actually hit. In 1943, the 8th Air Force conducted firing trials with experienced gunners against towed targets. At 400 yards, the hit probability was 8%. At 600 yards, it dropped to 2.3%. Remember, these were controlled conditions with no one shooting back. No enemy fighters performing violent evasive maneuvers. No minus 50 degree temperatures freezing gun mechanisms. And no combat stress. But here's what nobody talks about. Those 13 machine guns created a logistics catastrophe. Each B-17 mission required 4,000 rounds of 50 caliber ammunition weighing over 800 pounds. Gun mechanisms froze at altitude without constant maintenance. Spent shell casings filled the fuselage, creating hazards for crew movement. Gunners had to manually clear jams while wearing heavy gloves at minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, watching German fighters line up for another pass. The oxygen system tells another dark story. At 25,000 feet, crewmen needed constant oxygen supply. One punctured oxygen line meant unconsciousness in 90 seconds, death in four minutes. German fighters specifically targeted the oxygen system. A single 20 millimeter shell could depressurize an entire aircraft section. Gunners watching for fighters through fogged goggles, fingers going numb, watching their breath freeze, trying to track targets moving at closure rates of 600 miles per hour. Here's where the mathematics get truly devastating. The 8th Air Force flew 291,508 bomber sorties over Europe. They lost 4,754 B-17s to enemy action. That's 1.6% loss rate per mission. Sounds survivable, right? but crews flew 25 missions. The compound probability meant only 25% completed their tour unscathed. 75% would be hit at least once. 46% would be killed, wounded, or captured. The Germans developed specific tactics called company front attacks. Instead of individual fighters, they assembled formations of 30 to 40 Focke-Wulf 190s and Messerschmitt 109s. They would approach head-on in line abreast, each fighter selecting a target. 13 machine guns versus 40 fighters 
attacking simultaneously from the blind spot. The mathematics were simple. Even if gunners achieved their theoretical 8% hit rate, they might damage three fighters while 40 poured cannon fire into the formation. Let's compare defensive effectiveness to actual outcomes. During the Schweinfurt raid in October 1943, the 8th Air Force lost 60 B-17s out of 291 dispatched. That's 20.6% losses in a single day. The survivors landed with an average of 37 holes per aircraft. Gunners claimed 186 German fighters destroyed. Post-war Luftwaffe records showed actual losses. 38 fighters. The defensive firepower was 10 times less effective than crews believed. The operational reality reveals the final truth. Of the 12,731 B-17s built, 4,735 were destroyed in combat. Another 3,433 were damaged beyond repair. That 64% of all flying fortresses built were shot out of the sky despite carrying the most defensive firepower ever mounted on a bomber. The average B-17 survived just 8.7 combat missions before being destroyed or permanently damaged. A veteran gunner from the 100th Bomb Group explained it simply. Those 13 guns were for morale, not survival. We needed them to feel like we could fight back. But fighters came too fast, from too many directions, with too much firepower. You just hoped they picked someone else today. The math is undeniable. 13 machine guns, $84,000 per aircraft, 10 highly trained crewmen, all that firepower, and 77% still didn't survive their tour. The B-17 proved that in modern warfare, defensive weapons can't compensate for being a massive, slow, predictable target flying in formation at 25,000 feet. The Flying Fortress was a fortress, with windows the enemy learned to shoot through, and those 13 guns gave crews just enough hope to keep climbing aboard, mission after mission, into mathematics that couldn't be beaten.